Greetings, Dr. Cheng. I am Brian Ng Yao Sheng. This is our group title, a suicide prevention app, social media monitoring app. I will be talking about the main reason people commit suicide, the Malaysian suicide statistics and the problem statement and motivation. So, why do people suicide at first? There are a lot of reasons, I'm just sharing some of the most common reasons. However, there is an obvious spike on suicide cases related to academic stress. This is a serious issue to be addressed with. Based on the National Suicide Registry, Malaysia, the guys are more likely to suicide, especially the Chinese people. Probably it's because of their culture in raising their children in an overly stressful environment. As you can see, the students are the main leading category in suicide cases. Moving on to the problem statement, the rise of suicidal cases is astonishing because according to the WHO statistics, there is a person thinking about suicide every 40 seconds. How does that sound to you? It's terrifying. Next, the threats of cyberbullying in Malaysia is awful. You can see nasty comments all over the social media and not everyone is strong enough to take harsh feedbacks. They post it without considering the impact behind the messages. And finally, the lack of effective platform to detect suicide attempts and prevent it from happening. As suicide thoughts are usually asymptomatic, Every little detail is very important for us to track and prevent suicide. This is why we decided to create this service and that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Greetings, I'm Chong Guan Huan and I'll be presenting the software architecture diagram. The proposed solution of our group is built by using Google Cloud Platform and today I will be I will be discussing on Facebook Messenger, Google Assistant, Dialogflow, thanks to Speech and Firebase. First of all, Dialogflow allows users to create messaging bots that respond to customer queries in platforms like Alexa Voice Services, Google Assistant, and Facebook Messenger. Besides, Dialogflow can be used for a variety of applications, including customer service AI agents, conversational commerce, and IoT. Next, users can enable automatic text to speech. Then the Dialogflow agent will automatically convert default text responses to speech in all conversations. For Facebook developers and Facebook Messenger, the current proposed solution is to create Facebook Messenger bot using Dialogflow integration. Then the Facebook Messenger bot will pass the input message to Dialogflow agents to process for automated responses. Next, Google Assistant will be handling communication between your Dialogflow agent and the Google Assistant using the conversation protocol. So users are able to access to the chat box through Facebook Messenger and Google Assistant. For Firebase, Firebase is implemented to build a real-time database to store all the input data from user. Moving on to demo, users can train their own intent, which training phase is phases for what users might say and responses is to define text, speech, or visual responses to return to users. Next, here is a sample of communication with chatbot through Facebook Messenger. The yellow box refers as the expected phases in training phase, and the red box refers to input message and it will be stored into Firebase. The blue box shows the responses from chatbot. For Firebase, it can be seen that the input messages from users will be stored into real-time database automatically. Finally, instead of Facebook Messenger, users can access to the chatbot through Google Assistant by mobile or laptop devices. The red box shows that phase for Google Assistant to connect with Dialogflow agent and the default phase can be modified in the Google Action Console. So users can communicate with chatbot through multiple platform and that's all for my part thank you greetings so we are going to see how do we store and analyze the data 
So for this session, I would like to explain both Firebase and Cloud Storage together. So for Firebase, we are going to export the data from Firebase to a JSON format file and then store the file into a bucket of uh, Cloud Storage. And then we will ingest the data into a AutoML natural language. And this is to carry out the sentiment analysis of the data in order to understand the emotions behind the data or the sentences. So for AutoML, it will show both positive and negative magnitude. For positive magnitude, it means there is a happy emotions behind the data or if it shows the negative magnitude, it means these are ups emotions of the data. And then we also put the analyzed data into a cloud SQL. So for this project, we chose MySQL. So the purpose of doing this is to put the analyzed data into a structured records for easy retrievals of queries. All right, here is the quick demo of the architecture. So the first one, export data in Firebase as JSON format file. So we are in the Firebase interface. So once we get the database, so we, there is a three dots uh, button there. So we click on export JSON to export out the JSON file. And then in terms of cloud storage, so we need to create a bucket first. And then we will upload the JSON file into the bucket. And then in terms of auto ML, so firstly, we need to enable the API first. And then we need to type this command so that it will save the result of the auto ML into the, the folder uh, in the format of a text file. So at this demo, it didn't show the result because uh, later we will show the result in the SQL. So next, my SQL. So in this project, we chose my SQL. And then uh, we need to create um, a database instance into the MySQL. And then we need to create a database and a table as well. And then here is to import the file into the SQL. So this is in the CSV format. And then once it was imported into a database, and then we retrieve the data via the queries so that we can see that there is we can see there is a magnitude and score. So for this case, since it's a positive magnitude, it means that this is uh, happy emotions behind the data. So this is a quick demo for this architecture.